You may not know Kunio Kun by name, but I guarantee that you felt his influence. He's the star of a string of classic 8 bit games that helped to shape the beat em up genre in the 1980s, influencing the likes of Final Fight, Streets of Rage, and even the Yakuza franchise. His rise to power is chronicled in Double Dragon and Kunio Kun Retro Brawler Bundle, a comprehensive new compilation that shows the Neketsu High School student at his very best and worst. It not only includes old school favorites like River City Ransom, Renegade, Super Dodgeball, and the Double Dragon trilogy, but also 11 Famicom games that were previously unavailable outside of Japan. This collection makes a strong case for why Kunio Kun is one of the most important characters in video game history. Featuring 18 games spanning the six years between 1987 and 1993, the Double Dragon and Kunio Kun Retro Brawler Bundle offers a brief but important look at the early building blocks of the beat em up genre. It's also an interesting time capsule that shows the developer finding its voice and experimenting with genres and creating a large, connected universe of characters. You may not like every entry in the collection, but I'm here to say that there's something unique and noteworthy about every single game. Ugh, with so many titles to choose from, I have no idea even where to start. The truth is, that's also how I felt when I loaded up the game for the first time. Do I play the hits, or focus on the American ports, or check out something I've never played before? In my case, I started at the beginning and worked my way through the collection in chronological order, seeing how Technos was able to try new ideas and simultaneously learn from their mistakes. A good example of this is Niketsu Renegade Kunio Kun, which later came out on the Nintendo Entertainment System under the much simpler name Renegade. This is the first game chronologically, and you can tell that Technos was still working out some of the genre's kinks. You see this in the stiff gameplay, directional attacks, and maze at the end of the game that is the very definition of frustrating. And yet, while so many aspects of the game don't hold up in 2020, it was daring enough to at least try new things. Like this entire level where you fight on a motorcycle. Now, while Renegade kept you in closed arenas, Downtown Niketsu Story, or River City Ransom, as we know it here in the United States, does the exact opposite. It throws Kunio into a sizable open world full of memorable characters and locations, all while telling a story that is a lot more complicated than what you normally get from a beat-em-up game. This is also true for the similarly themed downtown special Kunio Kun's historical period drama, which transports our hero back to the Edo period to kick some ass. This is one of those Famicom games that never made its way outside of Japan, and finally being able to play this weird, time bending brawler in English makes this collection a must own for Kunio fans. And it's not just the unreleased games that makes this collection so special, but also the ability to finally play the original Famicom versions of some genuine 8-bit classics. We finally get to see the story and framing in Niketsu High School Dodgeball, which was largely scrapped in order to create the completely disconnected Super Dodgeball. Another good example of this is Renegade, which reskins the original game to look a lot like the 1979 film The Warriors. Similarly, River City Ransom swapped out Kunio and Ricky for Alex and Ryan. And don't even get me started on what happened when surprise Niketsu New Record became Crash and the Boys Street Challenge. <sighs> While the gameplay and scenarios are often the same, it's fun to compare the different versions to see what the developers thought would appeal to Western audiences. Now, you may have noticed that I mentioned the word dodgeball a couple of times just now. Yeah, that brings me to my harshest critique. For a game that's called Retro Brawler Bundle, only half of the games are actually brawlers. That's right, depending on how you count, nine of the games in this package take Kunio off the streets and give him some sort of ball to throw around. I mean, the guy plays ice hockey, basketball, track and field, and even soccer in two different games. 
Oh, and don't forget about Downtown Niketsu March Super Awesome Field Day, which is a game that sees four characters in a rock'em sock'em foot race to get from one side of town to the other. Sadly, neither Billy nor Jimmy Lee take part in any of the sporting events, but the Double Dragon Brothers are represented by the inclusion of the NES trilogy. This includes 8-bit ports of the original Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2, The Revenge, and Double Dragon 3, The Sacred Stones, all of which stray from their original arcade counterparts in some pretty significant ways. For as comprehensive as this collection is, it's a shame the developers didn't give us the option to play the original arcade games just to compare or something. Yeah, on the other hand, Double Dragon 3 is crummy no matter which version you play. And that brings us to my biggest criticism against this compilation. The quality of the games is just all over the place. This is a collection of some truly stellar beat-em-ups that remain as much fun now as they were 30 years ago. However, there are a few games in this set that I never want to play again. Unfortunately, I'm talking about a lot of the sports games, especially Niketsu Street Basketball All-Out Dunk Heroes. I also can't get over how shallow Downtown Niketsu March Super Awesome Field Day is. And did I mention that Double Dragon 3 is awful? On the other hand, I really do appreciate the effort that went into compiling this collection. And it's not just that Arc System Works has done a good job including the 8-bit library, but also that they've gone a long way to improve most of the games. This includes removing bugs and cleaning up the flicker problem and even rebalancing the dodgeball games. There's also an online mode for people who want to experience the multiplayer games with friends and strangers. Look, even though I don't love every game, there's no denying that this is a high-quality compilation that finally gives Kunio-kun the love and respect that he deserves. This is a bundle that reminded me of the greatness of River City Ransom and showed me that the original Famicom version is even better. It introduced me to a historical period drama and even a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. Double Dragon and Kunio-kun Retro Brawler Bundle is the kind of compilation that I definitely want to see more of. While not every game in this collection holds up, there's more than enough here to keep both Double Dragon and Kunio-kun fans glued to the screen. Even though weaker entries show Technos as a company with ambitious ideas and the ability to learn from their mistakes. Genuine classics like River City Ransom, Double Dragon 2, and Super Dodgeball are there to draw you in. But the real stars of this collection are the 11 games that were previously unreleased outside of Japan, each with brand new English localization. Although the price is a bit steep at $40, Double Dragon and Kunio-kun Retro Brawler Bundle is an impressive compilation that helps to demonstrate why both of these franchises were important to the evolution of beat-em-ups and, to a much lesser extent, sports games. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite video game compilation? A long time ago, well over a decade ago, I posted a list of the top 50 video game compilations of all time at the Defunct Games website, and it used to get a ton of hits. Of course, these days it's woefully out of date, and it's something I've considered updating. There are a ton of new compilations that really deserve to be added. Let me know if I should do that. In other news, I'm still working my way through Persona 5 Royal, so I'll get that review up a little bit before release. And we'll be back tomorrow with a review of This Strange Realm of Mine. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.